All right, you guys, don't be goofing around. You guys better come by me. I'm talking to you guys. I'm talking to you guys. I'm talking to you guys right here. Get up on me. instinctive skill was a 
a very, very desirable trait. And for thousands of years, many families of breeders have worked on that. Look at the tails on these guys. They're so happy to be here. And those families of breeders, they, they knew what traits they wanted. Now these, these dogs are also bred to hunt, so they, they have an intense ability to hunt, but almost all the time you're hunting with the dog, right? So the ability to work with the handler is paramount. And you can see it in this group like almost like no other. There's virtually no other breeds that were bred for this kind of close contact work with the handler to, to literally be communicating with the handler from, from almost very, very early age. Like this dog's been communicating kind of about this one too. Like they're, they're talking to me. And I'll tell you that instinct, I'll, I'll draw you a little outline. Years ago, when Dakota was a young male, he could really hustle. Man, he had range and stamina, but he was so intuitive. And I'll talk a little bit about energy in these dogs too. But he would get way out, we were out in the Rockies, and he would get way out, long ways out. His range was incredible. And I would find a high spot, he would know where I, where I stopped, I would wait for him, I would be waiting there, and he would go way out, and he'd die. He'd be, I'd be glassing up the ridge up there, looking, and he would just show up. And I don't know what energy he had from me, but he knew, okay, now I'm looking. And he would flash his ears and wag his tail then, and he'd wait for a sign. Way out there. I had to use binoculars. I'd give him a sign, go ahead. And he'd go, I'd scan and scan and scan. There he'd come again. He'd look at me again, wait till I knew what I was looking. Me. Unbelievable. If I sit by me, he'd run the whole way. Just phenomenal instinctive ability, that dog. But more, more importantly, um, this particular lineage has an energy ability that is far superior to a lot of, lot of breeds to match the energy of the hand. And I mean, you can literally start to move these guys, do what you want with these guys, literally with just energy, just, just drawing them over. They, I mean, it, it's fascinating. And, and they're happy to come and happy to work, right? They're just, they're so profound. Yeah, I'm very good. What? I'm right here. That's a communicator line. Now, to quote you, talk all the time, too. You always talk. And tell me what's going on. Let me know that he's hearing me, working with me. Phenomenal. Now, these guys can go play anywhere. They can go do anything. But they're all just turning a line right up here. It's quite fascinating. And just a little tiny guy. He's only been walking for about a week. And uh, just, just brand new, getting going. Just little rascals. Uh, fascinating. You see over the centuries how a breeder would pick a dog and pick a line and, and so on. He would, he would work toward traits that are good in, in the field that they're used in. And this, this here ability to focus on the hand where you see then the breeder would look through them all and you could hardly make a mistake in this group. They, they all have incredible focus, right? But over just a very short period of time, you would see certain things like this ability to just literally glue on is, is a phenomenal trait. Now every dog in this pen pretty much glues on. But uh, that's how over time, certain things, you just, you pick the pup that has that right front and center. They all have it, but some just show it easier. The instincts already woke up, I call. Now, there's other, there's many, many instincts in these dogs, and over
over time you can wake them all up. But some dogs have their instincts buried much deeper. And so it takes a fair bit to wake up the instincts. Now in my lines, all the instincts that I like are all woke up and right on the surface. They're like right in front. They show up in pups. But I have to bring in some lines that uh, are not my lines. They, I know they have the instincts in them through research, but I have to wake those instincts up. But there's, a, there's an unknown thing that most don't know, is that the minute you breed that dog that has the instincts that are dull to a dog that's got them right on the surface, boom, they're almost all right on the surface. Very, very fast. And if you breed a pup from that dog with the ones that have them right on the surface, wow, they're all right there. So, it, as long as the essence, as long as the essence of the instinct is in that that first dog, you can get them out. Now, the trick with the with the declining genetics is that. Some instincts are gone in some lines. It takes 10 generations for an instinct to disappear. It takes hundreds of years to put it in. And once it's gone, it's very hard to get back in. Now, other, other instincts take forever to get out. Like the bite instinct out of a dog that's bred to fight. That takes forever to get out and literally you don't get it out. Um, those types of things. You could breed a, a group of rat dogs for 55 years and never show them a rat and you would never get that rat killed instinct out. They would come out and kill rats that day. They would all just, you could, you could take this litter of pups raise them up if they were all rat dogs, little little terriers. And you know those uh, those Jack Russells. You could take a, a litter of Jack Russells that hadn't hunted a rat in you know, fifty five years in the history of that set of Jack Russells, throw all the whole litter in when they were old enough, and the whole litter would kill rats that minute as soon as they saw a rat go. And they'd know exactly what they're doing. So some, some instinctive traits take a long time to get out. Others go out fast. Handler focus can go out quickly. And that's why you hear the stories of stubborn elk hunt. Elk hunt was never stubborn. When have you ever seen a stubborn elk hunt in my yard? Never. It's non-existent. So stubborn is simply the hand of focus lines have been bred down, like just the breeder missed it, didn't focus on it, wanted to look at something else, focused on something else. Now, genetic diversity has to be front and center when a breeding program is selected. And so that does give breeders that are focusing on and are focused something, you know, they got to look a little bit because uh, not, not many people talk about hand or focus these days because it's not one of the key things. Lots of breeds, different breeds, they focus primarily on the style, the movement, the gait, the look, um, all of those things, and they want it to be exactly as it should be when it's working. Like show dogs, the whole goal of the show and their breed standard is to match that to what a working dog is. And then hope to God this dog is, is this dog without working the dog. That's what they try to do. And so that's why here, for example, I don't show. And so I never have to worry about competing with those people 
that show that's a good industry for them. There was a there was a reason for the show years ago. Now it's it's not the same reason. The show was initially set up so they could study genetics and provide good genetics and so on. But on the other side of the coin, lots of the old breeders thought the reason of the show was to learn how to breed. And in the early days, that was a very real thing because the lines were carefully kept. There was nobody doing videos at that time. The lines were very, very secure. They didn't tell how they got them. And if you wanted one of the very best hunting dogs, you went to the guy that had the best hunting dogs and he didn't tell you how he, how he got there. But when they wanted to find out, well, all they did is had people register and then they saw all the bloodlines and that's what they did. You take a look at golden retrievers, for example. Lots of people have no clue how to breed golden retrievers, but there was one guy that was winning with his sire, and the judges liked him, and the dog was good, and he transferred his good looks. So 1,800 pups later, that sire was found out to have a problem. Holy cow. Everybody that was breeding them bred to the same sire. Now, on these dogs, you see nobody goes over 100 or not too many that have to be some fantastic dog, but no more than a hundred. So you don't have those issues. Very much like the Dobermans now. Sixty percent of the Dobermans now have their heart issues. And so you can have a you can have a breed that's bred to, to look like and, and appear like and have certain things move through that breed relatively fast if you tighten all the genetics in the breed. And so for me, one of the reasons I go so far to get the other genetics, genetics that are nowhere near related, is to preserve the health, preserve the traits, identify that there's, there's no issues. And we deal with old master breeders. So, for example, you can go back in the history of these dogs and you can find 50-year breeders. Lots of them. And it's kind of cool because those breeders have good history. You can track the pups. You can track the health. You can understand uh, the quality of the dog. You can see the quality of the dog. And 50-year breeders in many cases, will place four, four, maybe five dogs with one family. And those families will stay in touch. And so it's a very cool thing. Lots of my people are coming for second and third dogs. And so it's very easy for me to get to see the old dogs, watch the old dogs. I get pictures all the time, videos all the time, updates all the time. And uh, it's very cool. Have you ever seen a group of pups so focused? Hey, just, just such a good set of dogs. These, these are truly amazing. Truly amazing. I, this is the best lineage in the world, in my opinion. These, these dogs are so good. My God. Yeah. These are full hunt lines, full hike lines, personal protection dogs. These are. You can walk through any territory. Now, the great grandmother of this uh, set, I don't know how many bears we sat and watched walk around us, and she just sat and watched them, right? Waited for me to tell her, like, she would like to go and treat them, but I would say, just hang on, just wait. And she would just watch them. Like, she would tell me they were there long before I knew. And she'd be all set there whining, on the go. And she'd just hang on, just keep an eye on these guys. So these guys will know everybody that's coming your way, anything that's happening. And it's every single dog in this litter that's here. They're focused, they're right here. If I go to sleep, they'd all crawl on and go to sleep. These guys would just live their life. 
working with me right like this. It's so nice to train the dog like this. Now the beauty of training a genetic capability, an instinctive trait that's placed in the gene, then it's it's like all you gotta do is just guide it a little tiny bit because it, it's it's geared to do exactly what you want, right? So it's not like you gotta go through a long drawn out process to get it to come and sit by you. I mean this is like it does that. It's not like a long drawn out process to get it to follow you around the bush. It just does that. And pretty soon these guys they'll follow me but in two, three weeks they would be circling me on their own. I wouldn't even have to teach it. They would be going out, turning around, checking in on me. But I don't have to teach it, I just gotta say good. Now, you is good. Every one of these dogs make an eye contact. Fascinating. So much, much easier to train. Now, it's just like a rat killer. You, you don't have to train a Jack Russell to kill the rat. He knows exactly how to do it. All you got to do is put him over the rabbits. Just take him over to the haystack. Right along the barn. He'll kill every rat that comes out. Just move the hay bale and rattle around the bed instead. It's just, those things are just easy to do. That's like these guys. The instinct of skill here. You, you could almost, um, I mean, these guys are self-trainers. They're self learning no. But these two guys are good. Oh my god, you guys are good. Talk about good set of guys. Holy cow. So yeah, phenomenal set of dogs. Phenomenal. Now the breeders that sat at the hunt camps and talked about the lineages to send here. We got the breeders in Finland hunters and master breeders and they knew what what uh, lines I have, they know the lines, they know them Norway lines and look at the job they've done, unbelievable to, to pick me the, the very best dog in the world to match with these lines I have here and to send me the absolute best that they have is fascinating. You know, Crew was the only male out of that litter. And that's a renowned female, right? For them to part with that, wow. Oh my God. But they like what we're doing here. And we love what they're doing, right? And so they're, they're going to take another litter out of that female, which is the nice thing. And now they know this genetic is cemented in and solid in another spot. I mean, in the absolute worst case scenario, there's a whole new set of this genetic again. It's like an island of genetics and very pure. It's very good genetics. Yeah, very, very good. You guys come up front here. Come on. Just sleeping right behind me here. Come on up in front here. Come on. Alright. Alright, you guys just come up here. Yeah, that's a good set of dogs. I doubt there's a better set right at the current time anywhere in the world. I'd have to call BS on oh, that if somebody said there was. There would be some serious set of dogs if there was. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Amazing hand to focus. Just, and I've seen hand to focus so crazy that, but this is wild. No doubt about it. Every single dog. Yeah. All right, you guys. Pretty good video. But you guys are good. You better come by me. Thank you.